Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're live. So, in this particular episode, we're going to be doing first timers to old timers, basically the progression of tech in our lives that have made things somewhat easier, or have they? Operator 35 years, owner of my company for the last three. All right. My name is Joseph Canal. I've been a truck driver for coming up on 12 years. Uh, all kinds of methods of trucking. Uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, Greg Murphy. I've been driving for 35 some years, and I'm actually with Uber Freight. My name is Robert Green. I've been driving for 32 years. I'm an owner operator and run Mistress Trucking out of Fairborn, Ohio. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this. I'm, I'm the moderator, so I will not be uh, hijacking this particular episode as much as I like to talk. <laughs> so we'll, we'll start with coming into the industry. I, now, I came in 12, 12, about 12 years ago. It was easy for me. I had a laptop with me and a cell phone. Uh, so I had, who, who has the longest time? Just, just a little bit. Yeah, you have, you have yeah, a long time. Tell us. When you started... What was your form of communication? Um, it, it was still, you went to the pay phone. It was even before, you know, people had any kind of cell phones or even before the, um, with, with the pagers, even before pagers. Right, yeah, you know. yeah, came in before. When, 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 do you remember when uh, the, I think it was like 10 years ago or something of that nature. When did the, like, what was the, uh, the former, oh gosh, what are they called? The electronic logs of the old days. I think Warner implemented them. Um, you had cell, you did not have cell phones. Did we have cell, we did have cell phones then. What was the old, uh, what are they called? As far as what? Like what Warner, Warner implemented the ELD, not an ELD, but. Uh, um, electronic logs? Electronic logs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they used to use those to communicate. And that they came in around 10 years ago? Probably before that, but, uh, but not many people were using I, them. Right. Now. I, think I actually seen a um, training, in-house training video. Uh, actually, it was produced by the OEM, and it was um, Qualcomm. And it well, was from Qualcomm, the, the we, mid-to-late we 80s. Right. It was from the mid-to-late 80s, and it had the huge keypad, yeah. and it had a, an accessory pager that went with it, and it was purely satellite communication based because at that time in the 80s and early 90s, there was no reliable cell network. Right. Uh, so the technology's been out since the 80s. Yeah, and they, it's just a lot of companies didn't. I remember they implemented them into the trucks, and you could actually, you had to pay. To, right. if, if it was you, expensive. It was very yeah. expensive. It just was like the cell satellite com based. Yeah. And then yeah. But it was, wasn't logs, it was dispatching and communication. Yeah. There was no logs. Was right. yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah, I think if I remember right, it was uh, MCI, the phone company. Mm -hmm. I I'm gonna forget who MCI got uh, swallowed up in. They started by putting the communications in trucks. Yeah, and so they were using cellular communications into trucks. So it was the first round of cellular communication. And it was not very. It, sometimes it was reliable, not the not the best. I remember that you, you would lose that data connection right. a lot. They'd have to move that uh, that move that little satellite. Out from underneath the hood, out from underneath the all that stuff. Yeah. Now, what is tech? Now, what have you found to be of value as technology has progressed? Oh, it's night and day from when I started. Now, my cell phone is a computer, yeah. and everything is done with the cell phone. It used to be, if you left your cell phone, you, you didn't have it for a week. Now, if you leave your cell phone at home, you turn around immediately and go back and get it. You're not going to go. Up. A day without it in this business. Now, now you're high tech. You like tech. Oh, I correct. love tech. I embrace it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, makes my world uh, much more easier. I I think of the uh, guys that have been in the industry 20, 30 plus years, and uh, I mean just a night and day difference. Uh, it give you a, a kind of a viewpoint from my captain's seat. There's a tablet sized. Uh, Big Road ELD, 
and on that also, that runs in the background once I get everything set, and then the rest of the time I have Copilot Truck, which is downloaded on that tablet, uh, running on a, on a mount. And then next to it, I have one phone that doesn't have cell service, but it's linked to a Wi-Fi hotspot. That runs Zello, push to talk over cellular, <laughs> yeah. the plus miles tracking. Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, my driveway's pre-clearance. Then I have the mount for my phone with cellular coverage for uh, phone calls and uh, uh, MP3 music. Yeah. Uh, basically, it, it, it divides the, the RAM amongst three devices rather than condensing it into one device where if that device fails. Yeah. And I also have my logs and my GPS backed up on the secondary phone with Zello. So if that system goes down, I seamlessly transition to the other within within five to ten seconds. I'm up on the second system. Got yeah, redundancy upon redundancy. Yes, just and to I've keep done. you safe because you have, you got to have that. Correct. What, what have you found that has you know brought benefit to you over time? You can start from the early days if you want to. Like, what did you hate about technology, and has it turned into something that's helped you now? When it first came out, I hated it. Yeah, I'll be honest. Then, like he said, we used to stand in a line at pay phones and go, really? Come on, <laughs> I need to make a phone call or I need to call home. Yeah. Then we thought we hit the lottery when they put them on the tables at dinner. Yeah. Because you can carry on a conversation with dinner. And like he said, if you leave the house now without your cell phone, you're lost. Yeah. Then I, I agree. I, Greg, you, you've done a, some very <laughs> interesting trucking. You've been in a lot of interesting places. How was tech back then? It, it, please do tell them where you've been. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, one of the most interesting places is in Antarctica, which is really interesting because all the technology steps back 15, 20 years. So you don't have a cell phone anymore. You do have to, you know, you're using radios, mm -hmm. which a lot of, uh, if you're running locally, radios used to be a real, uh, you know, phones and radios is what yeah. I remember. So CBs. Yep. Right? Yeah. And that's how the truck drivers kept in touch with each other on the road, had all the, um, um, you know, goings on what's happening up ahead and stuff like that. And, you know, getting the help of, uh, you know, yeah. w what you need to know when you go into a certain place so you don't get... I'm always worried about driving in some place I can't get out of, yeah. so, you know. Yeah, you, you, you were up in an unforgiving place. You've got to have communication. Right. right. You don't have communication. I don't know. I think if you go into some of these cities now and you drive <laughs> in with a truck, it's just about as unforgiving. Yeah. So it's something like the New Jersey. Sorry. I think I said that yesterday. I yeah. think a permit for that. <laughs> you need a permit for New Jersey. <laughs> so what we found, well, we all agree that the cell phone has become a very important part of our now daily lives. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what do you see coming? What... What now, during the tech that we have, do you see coming in the near future that can make it better? If it's not a cell phone, what, what's it going to be? It would be nice to be able to keep a signal from one state to the next. Yeah, yeah, so, there we are. You know, yeah. level out the playing field and, yeah. like he was saying, getting some oddball places out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, really? Yeah. I, I need to call somebody. You've got, your Qualcomm's not working? Because that's what I'm running in mine. Cell phone's got no service. It's like, he's just going to get away until I get out of here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. With your high-tech setup that you have going on. Uh, I run a uh, uh, cell booster, uh, and I have that Wi-Fi hotspot literally uh, Velcroed to it for maximum yeah. effect. Uh, so I have a lot less dead zones. There's been times where I've been able to get on, out on Zello where I wasn't able to get out over regular cellular. So that's another great plus for the push to talk over cellular, which I have not only my network of business partners and fellow drivers on, but I also have family on. So I can key up and go, hey, uh, for whatever reason, it's not dialing out, but I can get a signal out on this. Uh, you know, I can, I can request assistance there. Uh, also, I'm providing, uh, uh, you know, constant GPS locates through, um, or my position through Life360. All this stuff's free of charge. All you do is buy the hardware one time, and this is all 
free tech available to the public. Yeah. Uh, so uh, even in those very rural areas with uh, low cell signal, with that booster, that booster, uh, for example, my provider uh, doesn't have very good coverage in York, Nebraska. That booster now provides me coverage, whereas I turn it off and there's no coverage there. Yeah. So um, I've been to the middle of nowhere in West Texas, out on some state road. I still have 4G. I turn that off, goes Gone. to zero. Yeah. So, question, sir. I'm going to follow him around and see what he does. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no. This truck's here. You can go yeah. get no, the map. No, no, it's not. Oh, you didn't bring it. Okay. No, the sporting car's here. <laughs> no, the CTBS jet. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big shot. That's why he dresses so pretty. So, In my own mind. So you're using a signal booster. Now, signal boosters have been around. I think what Wilson Electronics has been around for a long time. Who's the other? Is there another big boy in, in that particular space do you, that you know of? Anybody? Uh, no. There's a couple, like... Um, Cracking off Crack. cell phone okay. boosters, you know, um, no names, China built, that type of stuff. Um, is the price worth it? Yes, from from a okay. from a safety standpoint, yes. It's four hundred dollars. The current um, uh, the current current uh, WeBoost system. Uh, the only caveat is, and, and they'll tell you, uh, not exactly up front, but they'll tell you. So this isn't anything. This isn't my opinion. This is directly from WeBoost. It will not do 4G for the Sprint network because Sprint um, rents or allocates 4G right. bandwidth from public safety, which the FCC came out and said you cannot boost this range of frequencies on the 4G network because it could interfere with public safety. But it works great for 4G on uh, Verizon, AT&T, as long as they're not using Sprint towers. Right. Sprint frequencies. You're, it's a 20 decibel gain, which yeah. is huge. That's actually very good. Yes. Uh, it, that's our tech now. But the tech back, well, for even in my time, your time, my time, and everyone's time in, in trucking is the CB. Uh, it, was, it, is, it still is. It should be. It's no longer. I'm going to be honest here. It's no longer the mainstay of trucking communication because we have all these other sources of communication. The only thing you were concerned about is Ma Bell and some change in your pocket, right? Yeah. Or How? somebody on the other end who will accept a collect call. Or uh, that. <laughs> or that. Prepaid cards when Pre they come out. Yeah, that was a big that was, that was awesome. Awesome. man. You saw them in every truck. I mean, you could have that international yeah. game changer. Like two cents a minute or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Man. A lot of numbers to dial. Everybody still running with the CB? Yes. Yes. That's me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and the internet just what? said, you're not a real truck driver. <laughs> nope, I, I run a Stryker SR94. Oh, stop bragging. Favorite. Get my out favorite. Of here. And it's small, it's modern. It doesn't have a ton of knobs that you can accidentally bump, and all of a sudden you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're 0.10 over frequency. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's yeah, <laughs> that. Tur you... Turn in your old timer card. Here. Okay, it's being revoked. Here, somebody take this from me. Yeah. I'm off the stage right now. <laughs> how much do you have? Okay, so you're like, a, you're like tweaking, and you like the gadgets. The gadgets and, I mean, that's more yes. of a hobby, you know. I, yes, it's, it's, you know, I don't expect everybody to just be obsessed with that. But I, I look from a business standpoint, what's going to make my job easier? What's going to offer better, ser allow me to offer better <coughs> service to my customers? You know, that one thing, and I just spoke about this uh, on, a, on a previous forum, Life360, you know. Um, I, or another app like that. I'm sure there's other apps like it. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not trying to plug them. That's just what I use. Uh, I can offer that with a simple code to my customers. Most of them don't use it, but some of them do. Yeah. And just knowing that I offer that just brings them so much comfort. It's like they, it, it ups the trust factor yeah. immediately. They just It gives them a it, warm and fuzzy. Is that in family? Uh, the family side of that, uh, you can give your family a a link and they can actually track you across the United States as you're going because it does it by your right. cell phone. And they can just see where you're at. And speaking of that, uh, I'm currently working on, there's a, a company uh, in, in China that actually makes a, um, it looks just like a two-way radio, but it's designed for Zello, you, uh, Right, and right. it actually has a panic button on it and there's an app that can be downloaded and I, can, I should be able to integrate that panic button and it'll give a message in an instant GPS location to whoever I assign to get that. So let's say, Jay, I put you on my list of alerts. It would literally send you a text message. His location's here, and here's the message. 
which mine would just be a canned message. Uh, if you're receiving this, this is not a drill. You know, the yeah. driver's either either uh, uh, been severely injured or been taken hostage. Please not reply nine one immediately. Prime actually has a system like that, a panic button. It, you know, in their truck. I'm not going to discuss where or how or you know, uh, for, for their security reasons, the security yep. of their drivers, but they're they're sprinkled throughout the truck. You just let they're the secret hidden. out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, an, it's widely enough. Prime's going to be sending you I a letter. I just won't reveal yeah. where they are, but they are there. They're hidden, and uh, if you attempt to mess with a Prime driver, they can have police on you within five minutes wherever they're at. So. Yeah. Hope, and hopefully they show up within five minutes. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, theoretically, yeah. though, their security, they have right. a dedicated it's security pretty team pretty that, huh? that call it out. They'll have cars on the way within five minutes. I, I'll, I'll at least say that. So, so this is not a wrap-up statement. This is just a, just a question. Do you feel that tech, the future? Do you feel that the future of tech is going in the right direction? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, you have to go from where we came from to where we are now to where he's gone. <laughs> Yeah, he's you know, super nerd. So, yeah, uh, yeah. He's I good mean, to go. I mean, I'm I'm way behind him on this, so I would. But you can see where a lot of that would come into play later, a little later than what he's going with it. But right. uh, I can't go that quick. So. Talk to Mac of the show. Yeah, give yeah. The whole breakdown. Sure. What about you? Sir? Where we was was maps. I mean, now you got GPS. Right. It's nice, like he was saying, with the Life 360, your family can check on you. Yeah. You can use it to let brokers tra track you if you need to. And you know Where what? we're going, that scares me. Okay. I'll be honest. All right. You know, it's yeah. like you watch it coming at you, and it's coming at you so fast, and it's like, man, what do I get to get next month, or what do I get to get next year? You know, how much more is it going to change? And will it all be for the better? Probably not. True statement. Because what's the one thing that we, what's the one thing in our industry, us as truck drivers, dislike the most? I can tell you what I hear, Elon. Well, in general, in a more of a general statement, what do we dislike change. the most? Uh, change. Yeah, change. Change. Well, you, uh, you're talking about the world. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody. Yeah. Right, because the world's going to just keep going. Yeah, it's just exactly, keep going. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we, our industry has been so slow to change. So slow. We're so behind where we should be. So when change comes at our face, it, 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 it's very scary. Yeah. I agree, absolutely. Because we don't know what's going to happen. Right, we don't have control. Over we it. don't have control. How do we get control? What, what can, what can, okay, a uh, uh, general hypothesis. What can somebody who, who came into the industry today, seeing what there is to see right now, in five years, how can they take control of their career? Learn as much as they can. Absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, so what, what does that mean? By what, learn how to be a good businessman? Learn, learn businessman, how, how to control your time. How to control your family life, you know, and, and yeah, people get mad at the statements that I'm getting ready to make. This isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, you go home, you're home for two, three days, you're gone again. And people don't know how to go home and leave the truck in the driveway or wherever you're parking it. They take it with them. You take home with you. You got to learn to separate the two, but you still have to stay connected with them enough that you're not getting divorced right. in three years. Yeah, you that, know? that's a heavy. That's a that, that's a heavy load to bear. That home life and that work life. Yeah, it's a it's a balance that we got to keep. <laughs> that drives everybody crazy. Yeah, and, and it doesn't matter what type of tech or whatever's coming in the future. That's still always going to be the same. Yeah, it's going to be the same. The balance. Yeah. So your statement is educate yourself. Educate yourself. Absolutely. I, I agree wholeheartedly. We can be afraid of what's coming in the future. We don't know, but we still need to be informed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Am I behind in what's going on today? Oh, yeah. I admit it. I was stubborn. <laughs> yeah. you know? We are the most stubborn people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. I, I want to 
wanted to add one thing with all the technology in my truck if all that all of a sudden failed I still have a map book yes, sir. a paper log book a yeah. paper bill of lading book I can do everything and I know how to use it I've been extensively trained how to use it uh, and shame on any carrier CDL school that is not teaching and demanding demonstration Absolutely. of advanced knowledge and ability to use those map books uh, lightning can strike one antenna tomorrow and knock out everything but the most basic function of my truck. My truck can get down the road, that's it. The dash might not even light up, but I can still deliver the load, get it there, or get to a safe haven, no matter if it's across the street or across the state, because I have that old school technology as a backup to everything. Right, not being Tech dependent. Right. It's your brain. Just like your autonomous brain. technology is still gonna have old school technology to back it up, always. Your thoughts? Well, I, I totally agree. I, you know, I'm almost a lot of times, you know, a paper map to me is like I can look at it and understand it, and it's a little, you know. And it's, uh, I think it's really essential to have that whole array of things that, you know, that just stack up to, to, to the highest tech from, the, you know, the most basic, most basic. should be paper-based. Um, I, you know, I think that the, the in terms of uh, going from you know old to new, that, that you know there's going to be a lot of change. But I think a lot of it's you know just we just relax and let it happen. I think it's all going to be okay. You know, I mean, it's it's it, you can look for you can look at all kinds of things in the past that have the same you know fear of not of the unexpected. You yeah. know, it's just a natural thing, human human wise. That you know, if you don't know, that, that for me, that's like I'm driving a truck and I'm going into a place for the first time. It's like that to me is yeah. uh, it creates a lot of anxiety. The second or third time I've been there, ah, that's cool. About the tenth time, I'm not even thinking about it yeah. anymore. I'm just doing it. Muscle right? memory. Hunts Point so, in the yeah. Bronx. That <laughs> yeah. was my second load as a rookie. Hunts Point in the Bronx. Yeah. Good luck, rookie driver. <laughs> Here you go. Merry Christmas. You hit the lottery. Uh, it's just going exactly. back to information is, is power. I mean, and that's in anything we do in our industry, from from um, loading your truck to the to the information you put in there. Just just like Uber, you know, we have our apps uh, to look for loads and everything. You have, you have to have all the information you can about everything. Uh, keep up with him <laughs> that, that one never stopped yeah. oh. that, that was 24 7 all day all day now i i like the way the text heading because anything that'll make my life simpler because there's nothing easy in trucking it's just only easier than that you know, right. you know as you go through different stages of trucking it just gets it can become more easier i like the fact that the people are coming out with like the uber how many times have you called brokers? How many times have you talked to dispatch? How many times have you done this, this, this? Or that you've been sent something? It, it, what you need's not there. And in our livelihood, it's time sensitive. Everything is our time. Right. If they get it right, now I have not run an Uber Freight. I have not run an Uber Freight. Load. So has anybody here run an Uber Freight? Load? Yes, I have. I'm a carrier. You have a carrier? Well, you, I have, but I'm not supposed to know what the company I'm leased to. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> this, is, this is not Robert. All right, so how would your... On the app? Oh, it's easy. All the information is already there. Uh, contrary to the traditional load boards where a lot of information is left off and you got to call to get the information. So I don't know what it's going to deliver until I call. I don't know what price they're offering. So I don't know if, you know, I, I make a phone call to a traditional broker and they have a load posted. And then they lowball me so low that it's not even worth negotiating. Right. You know, if, they're, if we're so far off, I know I'm not going to get them up. It's not worth my time. And even if I do, that just tells me what type of broker he is. Right. Oh, thanks. I know what the market's doing. Yeah. You're trying to keep 50 or 60 percent. I'm good. Oh, thanks. Right. You know, um, you know, you know I, I don't begrudge someone from, from making a good living. But when you're trying to get me to pull for $1.20 a mile and the customer's paying $6 a mile and you're pocketing the rest, well, I have six figures worth of equipment and you got a, a phone and a fax machine and a computer and a 
home office. You just put them in the fax machine, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Look That's at my cool. truck. Yeah. Um, I'm half a NASA. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, from, from the standpoint of the app, it uh, um, just makes things a little bit easier. Uh, again, do I book Uber Freight all the time? No, my truck always goes to the highest bidder. Yeah. The highest trusted bidder. All I care about is correct information and credit rating. If your credit's good, I'll haul freight for you. Uh, if you're if you're paying right, I'll haul freight for you. If you're if you're not priced competitively in the market, you don't get my truck. I don't break your deals. I don't you know I, I'm not here to help you out because when the market turns to the shipper's favor or the broker's favor, you're not gonna you're not gonna help me out. So, right. you know, there's no discounts. There's no free lunches with me. You're you're gonna pay to you're gonna pay to. So hardcore you know, right now. If you're paying, I'm playing. That's mm. it. Simple. All right, so you've hauled for them as well. Yes, I have. Um, just hauled a load last week up to Kansas City. Um, it wasn't off of the app, uh, though. It was a last-minute load they called me on. But I, I keep up with their app and everything just to, like I said, inform you, you have to keep up with as much as you can as far as the, the price ranges and everything. And my... My price ranges is usually a little higher than what uh, the norm is, but um, but with the app, I can see what everybody's paying and know where I need to be for my own business. Right. So right right now, if, if the prices aren't right, they're still a viable option. You know, it, but now, when I thought about the app, and I actually said this in an interview at the weigh-in at GAT, I said you are a viable option. You know, I mean, if, if you're if you're a viable option, if even if you're not, if, if it's not anything that's paying the best at that time, you're still a viable option right. for me to get from here to here to get back into the right freight lane and get you know get a higher rate to, to move a truck. It's because you know when you're not moving, you're not making any money, regardless of your company or lease owner op, whatever it is. The truck's got to do something. So that's where I found value in like the Freight app is that it doesn't matter what's going on. You're a viable option and a resource for me to move a truck. Is that, yes, that there are times when it's not just a money deal. Like I was in Texas and need to be in Louisville. Well, you can't necessarily just hold out for the highest right. price to the last minute. Yeah. So I had to take a load that would come here, but the parameters fit. It was uh, delivered to the airport here this morning, and so we, the price was not everything then. It was, okay, you're going to where I need to be today. So right. I actually took a lower rate than I would normally take just because of that, which happens once in a while. Yeah. I try not to let that happen too right. often, but, but it does happen. And so you look, you look for every viable option you have. Exactly. Right. And, and now, Greg, you, you work in forward with Ray. You are, you are being on the inside of this. How do you feel about where the app is at now? The book is the bad. What, in what your do you opinion, mean, kind of a general question. It, it is very general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to give me give me a specific answer to my very general question. <laughs> well, I think you know when you you look at it, it shows you what's available. Yep. It's easy to read. Yeah, the price is right there. It's real transparent about all the uh, aspects of the load. The um, so it makes it you know real straightforward, and if it's good and if you like it, then you take it, right? right? The rates I think are you know they're market rates. It's not like it's something that's outside the market. So uh, you know one of the things you always have to look at is you know what the lane is, right? Uh, a lot of times you know if you're comparing people compare prices on and stuff, they're they're not uh, they're comparing not comparing apples to apples. Sometimes apples to oranges. Something will be you know, a different lane, so. Um, but that's that's not really about the app so much. Um, it's, one thing I know is that from being in the office, that people spend a lot of time doing things like this to get everybody's opinion, to have a conversation right. about it, say what will work, how can we do the next thing, what is the things that people are gonna need in the future? Because, you know, if we are, you know, fearful of what the future might lay, one of the things is, is you can ask questions about where it's going, right? Oh, right. And You're so that's what this is an opportunity to say, hey, I, you know, where, where do I see things are going? Uh, these are things I like, these are things I don't like, right? 
your, your yeah. meeting, don't don't sit three states away with earplugs in throwing stones. Right, exactly. Right? Actually, yeah. join the conversation. conversation. Yeah, join uh, the conversation. Uh, no, noble concept, Jake. Little noble. <laughs> noble concept. You mean communicating? <laughs> yeah, communicating two way. You know, leaving that talks open line of communication talks. going. Yeah, yeah. you know. Because uh, what happens when you shut down the line of communication? Oh, uh, things just go, you know, no one gets served. The customer doesn't get served. No one makes uh, what they want to make. Everybody becomes, uh, you know, filled with hate and discontent, and uh, then rumors start. Yeah. You know. And, uh, especially, well, there's quite a few Internet social media influencers here in this particular space that you can't see them. And you got myself, and, and, and Dan mm -hmm. is somewhat... Uh, now Greg is, is also one, although you know, he's kind of famous, doesn't even know it. Uh, <laughs> you shook my hand for a reason. We won't discuss it on this stage. Yes, sir. <laughs> the information particularly that you shook my hand for, you were grateful for that information. Mm -hmm. So if the information that I gave you and, and a massive amount of people and I'm not putting myself on anything here. This is just, did it serve you, that information? Did it serve a purpose? It validated. It validated, okay. And it, it goes back to what we were saying a minute ago, it's knowledge. Yeah. It, the more you know, the better off you are, even with freight rates. You know, I can grab a load, I pull reefer. If I grab a load and go to the middle of nowhere that pays good. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, the only thing coming out here is flatbed, flatbed freight. Yeah. I just screwed myself. Yeah. Unless that broker can guarantee you. Exactly. Whether it be containers, pallets, whatever. You know, it's going back to knowing what you're doing and having enough, enough time or enough common sense to see this ain't going to work. I'm going to lose my butt on this load. And I see guys do it all the time. I've always preached. Don't run your truck for less than what it takes to own your truck. Yeah. The guys going into a weak market area uh, and they don't build in the money to come out into the rate going in. Case in point, we'll use Denver, Colorado, where, uh, you know, there'll be 100 trucks and 10 loads and they're trying to get you to move. 80 cents a mile, well, you're going to have to take it. But you know what? And when the broker tried to come, you know, make me come down on that, I'm like, hey, look, brother, you understand that I'm going to I'm going to eat garbage. I use a different term, but I'll, I'll clean it up here. I, I'm going <laughs> to eat garbage coming out at 80 cents a mile. So I got to bake it into the rate coming in. He's like, okay, hold on a second. He does the whole, hold on, I'm going to talk to the customer. No, it's hold on so he can take a drink of coffee. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, yeah, go talk to yeah, he's talking to his boss. Yeah, best we can do is 450. And then they give me my 450. And then they immediately agree with me. Yeah, we'll do 450. And you make a great point. I'm like, I know. And you were hoping I didn't realize that. But I think that. I don't say it. But uh, yeah, so I don't, okay, cool. I'll take your 80 cent a mile out because I built into the rate coming in. No problem. Or I can just dead head out. If if you're too much of a hassle or if you're arrogant about it, I'll be like, keep your 80 cents. Sailboat fuel is fine by me. I'll go to a different market. It's cheaper no coming problem. empty. No, nothing's, nothing's worth my dignity. Yeah. <laughs> True. It's a lot cheaper it, and as technology uh, gets a little more advanced, we're going to be going, going more toward maybe an app. Like a lot of brokers, a lot of stuff is going to be app based. I mean, already brokers are app rates, like uh, who's a uh, convoy, convoy, uh, Uber Freight, then you got the uh, who, who's some other that are out there currently right now? JB Hans, uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah. Truck 360 app, right? Yeah. Um, Almost think... all the big ones now are coming out with an app. Yep. Yeah. Now some others are doing something I don't agree with, uh, but on the side of what Uber Freight's doing, it's more of a what you see is what you get. Yeah. This is it. Uh, is, has there been, is there room for negotiation on via the app? No. Currently. Okay, now you guys also do a load board. Uh, Once it goes to the load board, in my experience, oh yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's different on the load board than it is what you it's see is what you get on the via the app. You know what you got, you know what you're going to move, all there, click it and go. That's, that's what the app is based on. If that actually has value to people who don't like to negotiate. Right. right. 
I mean, that's also you know, a benefit. So to those who don't like to negotiate, there it is. But now, uh, the other app, I'm not going to sit there and bash on, but I don't care for that bidding down part. I think J.P. Hunt started that particular process. Yeah, there's a... I'll call them Brand X. I won't. I won't name them by name because it's, it's, it's JB Hunt. No, no, no. Not. It's actually not that one. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's not JB Hunt. It's the Brand X version of Uber Freight. Let's just say that. Okay. I won't say. I won't say their name. You know, uh, it's the name of a great '70s movie, but I won't say their name. Not quite yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all their support is is offshored. Uh, communication is an issue, and all their rates that they quote are the dollar freight. So yeah. I start wondering when I see these comments on some of these videos, it's like, oh, hold on a minute, you're getting, you're getting Uber freight mixed up with, with Brand X, right. okay? Um, Brand X does that, 600 miles for 550 out of, a, out of a $3 a mile market. And then when you call and ask, you know, you, you get somebody that uh, you can't even understand over the phone. Um, Just because uh, of outsourcing. Right, offshoring, yeah, well, that's it's offshoring. Because they're also brand X, like, what, a startup? Would you call it, consider them a now startup? Yeah, but they're, they're yeah, they've been around for, um, I think, about two years now. The, the thing is, is they've courted some pretty heavy hitters in the trucking industry, and their response is, well, we don't like that Uber Freight is developing autonomous technology, so we're going to partner with them. Well, I don't like the fact that all their freight on, all their freight rates on theirs are legitimately listed at low ball rates and when I call them it's like I don't even understand you who am I talking to this is insane you call Uber Freight and it's a professional phone you know who you're you're calling San Francisco you're not calling actually you're calling else. Chicago yeah okay oh yeah that's right I'm yeah. sorry uh, yeah. Chicago operations okay gotcha yes right. uh, but but you're talking to someone here so all the Uber Freight bashing uh, it gets aggravating after a while because it's like all their staff are U.S. based. Yeah. Brand well, X is wherever. Yeah. Truck Not drivers here. like the bash, though. We yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 everybody next? needs to sharpen yeah. their axe on something. The, the internet is our place of yeah. venting yeah. and just <laughs> let's just say crapping on things. Uh, it, it is the CBs of. You know, right. You know, it, it, everyone has a voice. Everyone has the option of signing on to something and putting out their opinion, whether you know the person they're putting it out to leaves them you know, the availability or not. Of course, up to them. But yeah, the internet is a great. The internet is a swarm. It is a swarm of. Well, this actually brings us to. There's is there too much information? Can yeah. there can there be too much information with the global economy, the global internet? Well, not in all countries. Is there too much? Is there too much good? Is there too much bad? Where are we at right now? Right. I don't believe there's too much information. You can never have too much. It's how you get rid of it or you cool. accept it. Yeah. Yes, because um, when I'm loading my truck, I take all the information I can get. It doesn't matter where it comes from mm -hmm. and put it in here and at this minute I'm talking to a broker, I need to rely on that information now. Absolutely. And it, I can't, you know, go back and look it up or nothing. I have to know it in my head right now. And that's the only way it will work. And that's the only way I can run the conversation when I'm talking to the broker right. and, and sound knowledgeable about what I'm doing. Right. And in my business, when I call a broker, I command the conversation. I don't really because my price, I've talked to other people here, my price is my price. I don't do a whole lot of negotiation. My, everybody thinks I'm a good negotiator with the prices I get. I'm not. I just give a price and that's pretty much it. You stand where you stand. I stand where I stand. I tell you where I'm at. And you're like, what you see is what you get, you, Yeah, exactly. You're telling me, I'm telling you're, you. This you're talking to the driver you're going to get today, so I can't, I'm not going to, you know, yeah. give you any bull about anything. My business, I'm right. running it. Right. You're not going to take anything. What, what about you, sir? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I mean, you you tell them what you need to pull the load, and they come back with, well, we can't do that. Well, okay, this time around, I'll guarantee you're afraid to get there in one piece and not wind up on the side of the road well, that's yeah. in a big fire court. After you work with the brokers long enough, they get to know you and know that you're going to get your load there on time, in one piece, or early. And they'll come up off the rates a little. Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. So in his knowledge, like he was saying, it, you take all the information, put it in, and figure out what's trash and what's right. Just like I, when I shook your hand back here, mm. that validated, validated half of what I'd heard. The other half was garbage. Yeah. yeah. It, it, a lot of people need that filter. You got to have that filter to be able to dump, dump that trash right. out. Right. The, that's my favorite. That thing. comes from learning. That comes from learning. Not not just right. by somebody saying, but from actually learning about right. what you're doing. And a lot of these younger guys, they're not teaching them how to do that. I agree. They're teaching them how to do this, not use this. Yeah, I agree with that. It's sad. It, it, like Dan was saying, you know, us as drivers need to have that core knowledge. And I'm a big advocate for, I don't care in what stage of trucking, if you're at the beginning, beginning stage of trucking, you should not be coming out of trucking school without having that core knowledge of how to run a log book, how to understand. How to know, shift a manual transmission truck. Yeah, yeah. Shift, yeah. yeah. And there's schools now <laughs> pumping out automatic only, and Very I've watched good. guys. And they're on a limited license. Yep. When I, when I, just before I left a management position with Schneider, I listened to a driver out in the lunchroom area of the terminal on her, on the phone with her fleet manager saying, I won't drive a manual transmission truck, I'll only drive an automatic. You know, I'm not gonna be one of those that you're not a real truck driver to drive an automatic, you know. The, the, you, go. you know, it, that doesn't matter, but you have to have the skill. Skill set, yes. If you're, and if you're a here's your truck, it's safe, it's legal, it's DOT compliant, yeah, here's your load, yes sir, on the way. Yeah. Until you're an owner operator, until you have that level of skin in the game, you don't have a right to to just say I'm not. Yeah. Made many videos about that. If you want to, if How you want to you? make those decisions, you know, go buy your own truck. Yeah. Exactly. Put skin right. in the game like me, and then you can be like me. Yeah. Until All that, don't try to be like me. Right. Yeah. I love it when you get this right. That's right. <laughs> I make this Greg, look good. <laughs> is the what you see is what you get formula? Is, do you think that's is that the way we're going to be going in, say, six years, seven years, or across the platform one? Is, is that a, do you feel that it's a better for I, I think it's one possible outcome, you know, and, um, you know, there's a, there's a competitive marketplace, and if it turns out to be the, the, you know, the most effective economic model, then yes. And so there's, a, you know, I believe that it, it opens up a whole range of efficiencies. Yeah. Right. That once that, um, you, you know, you, you, it just becomes more efficient. You know what it costs to move this, this uh, load from here to here. Uh, the truck driver knows how much it costs. You take a lot of the um, uh, negotiating out of it, and here it is, right? Now, I, always, I think that ultimately you're going to always have edge cases. Right, they're going to be on the end of things, you know, edges of things, where you're going to need people that can do things differently. But that's just my personal opinion. That's not, you know, um, and so uh, I think this would be a wide range. But I do think it's just what the marketplace is going to, you know, I and I believe that you know uh, Uber Freight's going to do very well. Right? Are you guys the pioneers right now? I yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, when I was there and I talked to you guys, uh, I think I was talking to Chappie. I said, people don't need, actually, people don't really understand that you're Uber Freight. You're not Uber. You're, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, and I told, told Chappie, I said, you, you really screwed that up. And he's like, I know. <laughs> I said, you know where you screwed up? I said, yeah, we didn't really put that line in the sand. It says, we're not Uber, we're Uber Freight. And, uh, and he's like, well, do people actually know what you do? Said, well, no, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, well, we do. but we are Uber. Yeah. You're Ultimately. True. That's your, right. that's your parent company. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that when you look at the, the transformation in, trans, in transportation in general, um, a lot of it is through these efficiencies that are built by having a large network that you can look at and have this pool of data. That's... You know, AI and data, that's what everybody talks about. I read business magazines and stuff. They're yeah. all about AI and data, right? Uh, artificial intelligence and data. And so uh, uh, Uber is a 
data and in, in, in artificial intelligence companies where you have somebody, a very smart person sits down and does some math and figures out an algorithm how something works, right? right. And then it, it goes through and looks at the data and says, ah, yes, that works. And then you go and test things and whether they, you know. So that, I think, is going to... Um, you know, that, that, that's where, you know, where we innovate. And a lot of that DNA from uh, Uber is applied to Uber Freight, right. right? And so, but it's an entirely different industry. It is an entirely different game. So um, okay, well, there's not everything rolls over, not every part of it is, you know, you have to have separate paths. Because Uber is like a rideshare situation, and but you guys are, are a brokerage house, or would you say, or would you call yourself a brokerage house? No. Okay. What are you? We're a technology company. That's right. Technology. What's wrong with technology? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is over now. <laughs> so, where do you want things to go in the future? For profitability. Where For profitability. Want? You have, once again, you just have to take all the knowledge you can get about everything. Um, I've been very profitable with my company. You have to have your own niche. This guy or that right. guy, or you do different than they do. Right. Everybody's got to have their own. And I've kind of developed my own little niche. And... Um, it's helped me, and 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 it's it's not nothing anybody else can't do. But what works for me may not work for Dan, and what or what works for Dan may not work for me. That's, yep. that's kind of Everybody what I was alluding to before. Sauce. Everybody's different. We got yeah. all these different models. There's different ways of doing business. So you get, and you know there may be this big center part of the, the how the industry is run, but there's always going to be edge cases around the sides where smart, intuitive. Hard-working people can find, you know, really yeah. good good work. You know, and specialize, and, and specialize, specialize. You know, yeah. 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 Um, Specialization is really, good. yeah. yeah. Right. I've had people, a lot of people getting that are new in our industry. They're not that good at the negotiating part yet, and I've had people come to me and ask, "Why don't you, you know, do some kind of something with that? Since you're, that's kind of my specialty, but not, but it isn't." Um, I'm good with talking on the phone to the brokers and getting my rate. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of people want to know how to do that. And I said, you have to develop your own way to do it. You, can, you can't listen to me and have him do the exact same thing. It right. won't work. It will not work. It's a, it's a practice muscle memory of this is how I want it done. This is how it's going to be. Right. There's, this is my way. His way will be his own. My way will be my own. His way will be right. his own. It, and none of them are going to be exactly alike. So, it, at this time, you have children? No. Okay. Would you recommend trucking as a career? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, to the right type of person. If you have four kids at home, probably not. Yeah. But um, uh, unless you, you know, as a team, a husband and wife or something like that, um, but as a career, yes, it's not easy though. It's, it, there is nothing easy about this, and uh, it takes a lot to make it work. I mean, it's um, it's a seven day a week thing. When I started, you drove five days a week and you partied for two days, <laughs> and now you better be working seven days a week. Yeah, it's an everyday grind. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Now you you started you own your own company. Correct. And you are an adapter of tech. Where you're, where you going? Where you see it going in ten years? The, and would you recommend it to people? He already said it, like he read it right from my mind. So I don't need even. We're done with Dan. Yeah, exactly. I don't even need to repeat it. Uh, he read my mind perfectly. He put it perfectly. I can't piggyback on it. I can't add nope. anything to it. Right, right, one hundred percent for the right person. You got four kids at home. You got the got to get home itis. You know, yeah, yeah the, it's not hard work for you. To have a good so, home and people get upset when I pre-screen them. When they, go, hey, tell me how you did it. All right, sit down. What's your credit score? Okay, now what's your, what's this? What's that? What's that? You know what? 
Uh, here's an application. What is this for? Good Barber College. Uh, as far as the tech, as far as the technology, I see you're a customer. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't go to Barber Barber College and I cut my own hair. Um, now, as far as technology, I've already told you what I got in the truck. Yeah. I'll tell you the two things that I'm eyeballing right now. I'm eyeballing the bolt-on retrofit um, uh, autonomous technology. So I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, <coughs> Uber, Uber, uh, T and E, <laughs> a setup. Um, you know, uh, my truck's available for install. Uh, the semi-autonomous technology. Also, there's a company called, and, and I'm not affiliated with them, uh, called Hylion out near the Pittsburgh area that has developed an electric hybrid axle. So you can install the axles on the trailer and the truck, and it, it does regenerative braking similar to Jake okay. brakes, and it will uh, provide pulling power, especially up hills, to reduce the power of the diesel engine. They're quoting, if you set it up according to their configuration, under you know under a full eighty thousand pound load, they're saying you're going to see thirty plus percent fuel economy Ooh, gain. I like that. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. And your your engine's going to last longer. Um, transmission's going to last longer because you're putting less wear and tear on it. And you're not looking at this because it's cool. I'm, you're looking at it for business. profit. Yeah. Chrome don't get you home. I'm not into square nose peaks and all that. My truck is a snub nose with a DD13. It's practically a cab over engine. It is yeah. the snubbiest nose you can get on a conventional tractor. So over time, you're looking at tech to help you be more profitable. That's and right. it's worth the investment as you go. That's right. Uh, technology that will pay for itself back with well within the lifespan of that equipment. So it, it's no use to install something that it's not going to pay you back until after it breaks. Yeah. You're, you're never going to make a profit off that equipment. I'm looking for equipment that makes a profit, that's dependable. Um, you know, I had an APU, um, won't name their name, uh, they're built in Canada, and uh, uh, hopefully everybody knows, that uh, cost me $25,000. That's more than I paid for the truck it was attached to. <laughs> that was a bad investment, sir. Uh, yeah, and, and you know the, the trials and tribulations yep. I went through that. So um, I'm very, I do a lot of reading on the technology before, before I jump yep. into it. And I know it's pitfalls and I, and I know it's dependability. But those are the two big pieces of tech that I'm eyeballing right now. Uber, <laughs> hi. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> I, 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 the, the future is there. Um, we're, I, I'm excited for it. Okay. So, how about you, Mr. Green? You, you were fine with that first statement. If you're scared of it, say it. Do you? What do you I feel am and I ain't. I mean, it's back to the knowledge thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can take a poll over all the other ops in this lot. Every one of them will give you a different cost on what it run, yeah. cost to run a truck. Yeah. You know, and it's just back to the knowledge. Yeah. Am I scared of technology? Yeah, I know. You know, I'm not afraid to learn it. I'm not fully afraid to use it. But it's one of them, how far are they going to take it? Yeah. Okay. You know. Then, and that having, keeping the open lines of communication will let us know. Right. And, and I'm a big advocate for people learning, being educated, learning more, and having that conversation. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm here for. How about you, Greg? I'm going to close it out. Uh, closing it out? Um, oh, man. I'm... Put you on the spot. Well, yeah, third and for loop. No. no, I think the thing <laughs> is, is that, uh, you know, Uber's gone through a lot of work to create this venue for us, us to have a conversation. Yep. Right, and this is what it's about, you know, giving the driver and the driver community, and you know, extending that into shippers, dispatchers, everybody to to be talking about what's going on in the industry. So the conversation, I think, is really important. I hope everybody takes us up on it, and be part of the conversation. Yeah, uh, I'm a big advocate for the conversation because, well, I think. I don't see any problems up here where nobody wants to, does not want to know. Right. Exactly. I want oh, to know. Yeah. Yeah. And 
and hopefully, you know, Uber Freight and, and every other company that comes into this space to do to change the industry keeps an open line with everyone. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, uh, I think we're going to wrap this up. This was the live way in with Jake and Al. And you got Robert here. You got Greg. You got Dan here. And I, Dallas. Oh, you got that name that just screws <laughs> me up every time. But Dallas. And uh, I appreciate your time. And I appreciate Uber Freight for hosting this event for us drivers. And uh, y'all have a good day. We'll see yeah. you later. And like us on Facebook and sub on oh, YouTube. Oh, you're down. Come on. you got to put the shameless plug weird. in there. My name, yeah, okay. Jake Allen on, on YouTube. Jake Allen on YouTube. Smash the like button. <laughs> Smash the Put your bike and paw on that, on that like button. <laughs> All right. All right. Y'all have a good day. Okay. Appreciate it.